Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Itunubio podcast. I'm really excited because I hope that you all have been tuning in to season five. I really love the kind of like robustness of guests that I've had for this season. I really try to make made it my goal to have, you know, a whole diverse group of guests, whether they're men, women, content creators, musicians, um, just because I feel like it's so important for y'all to see that, you know, if you have a little talent here, if you're an interest here, there's something for everyone. So thank you everyone that has been, you know, checking in, uh, whether it's viewing, liking, seeing a clip on Instagram, TikTok, everywhere, to be honest, <laughs> we're everywhere. So thank you, thank you for, you know, supporting the podcast. I really wanted to kind of like slow it down, but still keep it, you know, cute and robust and have another guest before I go on a little hiatus because I do need a little break, but I definitely think this episode kind of combines all of that and then also combines something that I've gotten like really into, which is just moving my body and then also practicing a wellness routine for myself. So this episode is definitely for people that, you know, want to work out, but make it cute at the same time, meet others and also love good music. Because let me tell you, my guest today, whenever I've gotten the chance to attend some of her classes, music is always a part of it. So it goes hand in hand. So we're getting on with this hot girl wellness episode with my guest, Naomi. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you've been creating community here in LA. Um, you're a yogi, entrepreneur, content creator, but obviously there's so many layers to you. Um, I wanted to do a fun fact because I found out that you're a dancer. So kind of walk me through that journey. Like was dance always a part of you? And then how did that transition into yoga? <laughs> because I'm yeah. like, close to be honest, dancing is it's, it's a flow. Mm -hmm. so tell me how that happened. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So my dance journey started when I was three years old. Um, mm -hmm. It's a funny story. My sister was actually taking like an African dance class when we grew up in Kentucky. And I was there just like to watch, but I just started dancing myself and like learning the steps. And the teacher was like, oh, do you want to be in our recital? And I was just like, sure. And that was how I got started with dancing. And I really just didn't stop. Like that was my thing. Whenever somebody would say, what do you want to be when you grow up? It was like dancer, 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 dancer. <laughs> and then um, went to college for dance, went to the University of the Arts, had an amazing experience there, learned a lot, um, trained in so many different styles. And it was really eye-opening because being in a school with all artists, like you realize that art is a part of everything. So it doesn't mm -hmm. just have to be within one medium, like dance or singing or acting, like it just is a through line. And one of the things that they focused on a lot was developing like our artist statement and really understanding our identity, what interests us, um, what things you wanted to really like research and dive into. And so for me, that became like trying to figure out more about my identity as a black woman. And mm -hmm. even my final thesis before graduation was on just the coming of age, you know, for a black woman. And so after that, I moved to LA. I wanted to keep dancing. I wanted to pursue it professionally and came into the commercial dance industry and really hit the ground running. Like I was training all the time. I got an agent. I just was like, okay, we're going to make it. Like I was trying to dance back up on tour for like the best artists and everything. And honestly, the industry professional side of it was not what I thought it would feel like. Mm -hmm. um, it looked good on paper and to see people like living their dreams and be like, oh, I want that too was really cool. But in it, I dealt with a lot of insecurities around like, am I good enough? Um, and just feeling like with any other profession, if you're doing it for 20 years, like the pay would reflect that, the respect yeah. would reflect that. But in dance, like that's just not the case. And that was hard for me to, to come to grips with. And so with all that, COVID happened. And um, I was like, COVID. right. And COVID <laughs> happy, like, 
is the world ending? Like, are we ever going to have live performances? Like, nobody knew what was happening. And so in those first few months, I'd actually already started my wellness journey before COVID. Um, I'd started doing yoga at home. Um, I started just being more mindful about what I was eating. And then when COVID happened and just being stuck at home, it gave me the opportunity to really dive in. And I was able to kind of find my dance on the mat, um, Mm -hmm. even though it's like very different, it's confined and all of that. I still felt like that flow, like you said, really came into my practice. And it also allowed for me to move my body in a way that was healing me. Um, So that's how it just kind of transitioned into that. Um, And I don't, you know, pursue dance professionally, but it is very much a part of what I do. And it still lights me up and brings me like so much joy. So any opportunity to dance for fun or to just take a class and to learn and grow in that way is like really exciting for me. I love that. And it's crazy, too, how the pandemic kind of like shifted a lot of people's journeys or careers or just life path purpose. Um, I know you said that you were doing yoga at home. Were there any like uh, black women yogis or YouTubers that you were finding this time that you were kind of like in the house, kind of like rediscovering your flow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's the funny part about it. And something that I'm noticing in the work that I'm doing now with building communities and really wanting to create spaces for black and brown people, like, again, it ties back to what I was already like researching when I was in school and doing my thesis and all of that. It's just like, we need those spaces. We need to see people that look like us. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the biggest challenges I had when I first started practicing at home because it was just YouTube. And at first, Mm -hmm. I really couldn't find like many black yoga teachers. Like, it just was not out there um i found like arianne elizabeth who's like bright salted yoga on there um maybe one other one but for the most part i was just like taking classes from whoever i could find just to get started Mm -hmm. and then after that i just started doing it on my own and doing what felt natural to me until i did my training um which was like in november of 2020 but that's still something that i would like to see more of like people are popping up i put up a whole bunch of videos um on YouTube during COVID as well. So I know that we're out there, but we just don't have the visibility yet. And so you have to like dig a little bit deeper, you know, to find Mm -hmm. us there. No, for real, like even just, like you said, kind of like being practicing and then also wanting to see people that look like you, it makes a huge difference. It also just kind of builds up your confidence. So Mm -hmm. I do have to ask you because I know you went to school professionally for dance, And I can tell the education or just like that is a part of who you are. So did you feel called to the certification? Did you go to a specific like school? Because I know there's um, there's one that's pretty well known here in L.A. Treehouse. uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're very like POC, BIPOC. Like um, tell me how you found your certification and what called you to that specific like school or online diploma. So honestly, like when I did my 200 hour, I just was like, I need a training ASAP. And Mm -hmm. I was trying to like stay on a budget because at the time I was like working in a restaurant and that was closed. So I was like, I can't spend because some of these trainings are expensive. (laughs) Uh, But I knew that one, I already had the knowledge of my body through dance. Mm -hmm. Um, And two, I'd really been like, understanding the philosophy like on my own and like reading books and stuff but I just wanted something to pull it together and so I found something online through the Ayurveda school Mm -hmm. and it was good like it gave me a nice foundation to where I was like okay I know how to sequence you know a class and I have the basics but I kept going so like you said I do really love education I'm always learning um doing trainings and things and so after that I did a trauma-informed facilitator training through the School of Radical Healing. There's a woman named um, Adria Moses, and she's like so talented um, and just very conscious um, when it comes to holding space responsibly. Um, Yoga ethics is really important too. So when I did that training, it really helped me to learn how to teach because Mm -hmm. you can like have the steps. You can say, okay, this is a sequence, but like 
when it comes to really holding space, like it's different. You know, you have to be more mindful of the language you're using. Like, how are you giving people options to choose what works for their body? And so I learned a lot of that in that training. Um, I did also do a continuing education credit with the tree. So that was awesome because that was my first or I shouldn't say my first, it was my second like in-person training for yoga. And it was a, amazing like to be in a classroom setting and have a black yoga teacher who's training mm -hmm. you and then be surrounded by people of color as well, all learning um, was super exciting. So it's really cool, you know, to think about all the trainings I've had and to see how like with each one, like it's just adding and like allowing me to just have more like a well-rounded um teaching philosophy and like how I show up in the space mm -hmm. and to also see that like more and more people are being drawn to this work and are ready and just dedicated to growing for themselves and also for their communities. I really commend you one for like just having so many different styles and maybe for the viewers listening or watching when you say trauma informed, can you talk to us a little bit about what that means? And then also kind of like let people know, because maybe some people don't even know that when you do yoga, you could feel different emotions. There's been some times like at the end of class when I feel this release and I'm like, why do I feel like crying? <laughs> like yeah. I literally had a good day or, you know, I was just like, well, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to share. So Essentially, being trauma-informed means that you are able to teach people who have experienced different levels of trauma. It could be um, trauma related to a sexual assault. It could be trauma related to um, family issues, dynamics, things like that, grief. Um, and really, what happens is that you go into a training, and essentially, you're learning the best way to serve a broad range of students. You're also learning how to teach people um, uniquely. So instead of going into a class and saying, hey, everybody, let's get into this super challenging yoga pose and assuming that everybody can do it and everybody's coming from the same experience and background, mm -hmm. you're actually assessing and looking and understanding, okay, all right, we're working towards this pose. And let's say it's a dancer pose where you're like holding your leg up and you have your arm out. If not everyone is there, you give different options. And so when you're trauma informed and you know how to teach accessibly, those are some things that you would do. Now, the reason why when you're doing yoga and like emotions come up or even resistance comes up. It's oh, I've been you, there. Like, I can't stretch that far. It's <laughs> yep. And it's hard. It's very, it's very much mental just as much as it is physical. And so that's where the breath comes in and really understanding, okay, let me breathe into this space, breathe into this muscle, or let me actually just like pull back. Maybe I'm not there yet. Um, but that happens because in yoga, you're doing a lot of opening energetically. Like you're moving things around in your body that you have maybe never even moved before in your life. So it's going to conjure up some things. And also just different parts of the body are more prone to those emotional releases like the hips. So if you're doing like a pigeon pose, you're doing a low lunge and you're in that for like five minutes, it's going <laughs> to bring up a lot of stuff, you know? Um, but that's the beauty of it because it allows you to release in a way that's healthy um, and that makes you better versus like, you know, you get triggered by something randomly in the middle of the day and then you don't know what to do with it. Like in yoga, it's okay. You can cry. Um, some classes you can even scream, like do what you need to do and just like let it out of your body. Since you mentioned, you know, you are just like a passionate student and I do know yoga is, you know, for a lifetime, but when you taught your first class, like how did that feel? Like who, you know, gave you the opportunity for that first class and that platform? And did you feel ready when you taught your first class or was, did you have someone in the background kind of shadowing you? Yeah. Oh gosh. This is so cool. Let's take me back. So <laughs> I'll share two because I had my first class like online. So yeah. even, I think this is before I even got my certification. Cause I just was so like eager to share. I was like, everybody needs to do yoga. So I was doing just like these Instagram live classes. Um, and I don't, I'm sure I was nervous, but it wasn't to the point where it ever deterred me from just doing it. Mm -hmm. um, because I just felt so like clear, like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Now, my first in-person class was in LA. Um, There's a woman named Jordan Danielle. She was doing something called the lo-fi experience, I believe. 
and she had asked me to come in and teach a class. And I was like, of course, like I would love to do that. <laughs> and I remember I went, my friend Haley, she actually came, she took some pictures for me to just like document the moment. And I was just so happy. Like I was a little nervous, like before it started and like I have my notebook to make sure that I had the sequence right and all of that. Um, but again, something about teaching yoga made me feel so grounded um, mm -hmm. and almost to the point where it was like I was more confident doing that than like teaching dance because dance oh, okay. has a certain level of expectation for me that's different. And like, mm -hmm. it's probably just the industry side of it and like the professional side of being like, okay, it's supposed to be like this or like that. Whereas in yoga, it's like you share what you have already embodied and that's going to be good enough for, you know, the space, the students, whomever. And I think because I have always approached teaching in that way, like it keeps me calm and doesn't make me feel like I need to be perfect when I teach or that, you know, I have to always give this like life-changing transformative experience. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's just enough to say, hey, like this has been a crazy week collectively, but let's just focus on our breath and let's do these few poses together and just see what we can create that's gonna allow us to feel better. And that's it, uh, you know? Yeah, up today. <laughs> Showing up is enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think also, too, that's where the music comes in to make it um, light in that process, because it almost like carries the energy of the flow the entire time and keeps people in it. Well, see, this makes sense to me because I always like to throw it back before, you know, I talk to the creators about what they're doing presently. Mm -hmm. It just makes so much sense. You know, you have a dance background. Your classes have really good music. So it makes sense, mm -hmm. too, that like you kind of sync your moves with the music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, talk to me about how you just started your online persona because, you know, Naomi lives well. <laughs> <laughs> I love the name. <laughs> it's so cute. You. It's like flows. Um, was that your like original Instagram or you were like, let me just start this page and see what happens. And then the rest is history. <laughs> like, how does it happen? <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't the original name. Um, at first it was like Naomi underscore Brooke 39, you know, like when people first started their Instagram pages, it had like, no yeah. <laughs> um, and then I think for a while it was like underscore Naomi Brooke. Um, but yeah, it was like maybe two years ago when I was just like, I, I want something different that like, doesn't have an underscore in front of it. Like I want it to be like my name first. And I remember I put like a poll on my story. I was like, vote for the handle that you think, you know, is the best or like submit a name or something. And the guy I was dating at the time, he actually didn't like Naomi Lives Well. He was like, that's corny. Oh, well, look at look at how it's Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, that's why you gotta go with your gut. And it's like, for me, I knew that it, it made sense. Mm -hmm. And since having it, it's really cool. Cause like, people are like, oh, Naomi Lives Well. Like, that's really cool. And I'm like, yeah, it's like, it is kind of cool. Now I think about it, it's like, it's an affirmation. And it reminds mm -hmm. me like, okay, I do live well. Like I'm blessed I have a great life and like things like that. Um, but it also of course ties in the content that I post, which is centered around wellness, lifestyle um, and just being creative. So yeah, that, that wasn't always the name, but like <laughs> it just, it works and I, I love it. When, you know, you started just like putting more uh, traction with your yoga practice, um, did you collectively kind of just give some feedback or get feedback from friends like, hey, maybe you should like start doing your own thing instead of maybe popping up in different classes? Um, how did all of that start? Yeah, so it's so interesting because um, I feel like my journey has been very unique when it comes to yoga. Like typically people will get certified, they'll start teaching in studios and then, you know, maybe they'll do their own thing after some time. But because of COVID, you know, I was just like literally by myself. So I spent so much time meditating in the practice of yoga, talking to God and just like trying to figure out, okay, how do I want to serve? And I knew that my purpose, although dance was like really important to me, my, my purpose felt bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And so I got a lot of downloads in that time about like things that I should be doing and how to show up. And so the first thing was just creating healthy and well, the Instagram page. Like I didn't even know it was going to be a business at first. I just was like, Hey, I'm getting this information. I'm reading these books. I'm learning about how to take care of myself. And I feel like everybody should know these things. And so I just started mm -hmm. putting that out there. Um, 
And again, there was such a fearlessness in me, like when I first started to even just show up, like I would do something called Fitness Fridays, where I would do like these five minute workouts and like post the video. I look back at it now, I'm like, it's kind of cringy. <laughs> but like, I just, I didn't care. And I was like, yeah. hey, like you're gonna get this wellness, like if you want it or not. And I just like putting everything out there. Um, but for me to actually start showing up in person, I did have a push. Um, I'd actually moved into the apartment that I live in now and there's a rooftop up there and I would just go up there and practice yoga. And I got an idea to like do something up there, but I didn't feel like it was time yet. I was really trying to push online stuff, even though it wasn't like really growing at the time, it kind of was hitting a wall. Mm -hmm. And then I had a meeting with my mentor and she was like, okay, it's time. Like it's time to show up in person and do your own thing. And I did a rooftop yoga brunch where I cooked all of the food. Which was you cooked? Oh, I need to go uh, try your cooking. <laughs> yeah, I literally made all of the food. I taught the yoga class. Mm -hmm. I planned the flow. Like, it was a lot. Um, but I felt so, like, fulfilled, you know, to be able to bring people together and also to be relatively new to L.A., like, and to have, I think I had, like, 17 people, like, at the first one. Um, and to just bring people together with the intention of connection and wellness was just like, wow, okay, we're really out here. We can really do this. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I just kind of kept going from there and like seeing what stuck, like the rooftop yoga brunch was great. It wasn't something that I could do like all the time. So I was like, what can I do? That's a little bit less, um, laborious. And I was like, okay, let's do just yoga. And mm -hmm. then I got rooftop yoga versus. I love that, by the way. I love like a throwback to the verses, you know, the show yeah. and stuff. Like, <laughs> and the verses too came up because of COVID. Like when they were doing the lives verses and stuff like that with the artists, I was like, oh yeah, like this is perfect. Um, and just again, everything was so centered in music. Like I would do an online series of Tiny Desk Concert yoga. So I pick mm -hmm. an artist. I put their Tiny Desk Concert like in a small square, and then there would be yoga, and people could follow along. So. It was just like music was always inspiring me. And I just allowed that to like open up, you know, the possibility of how I wanted to hold space and build community. I love that. And it's crazy too, because it's like you are combining all of your gifts into this beautiful creation yeah. that honestly, like you do a lot. There's consistency <laughs> there, everyone. If you want to go and find all her socials and handles will be in the description of this video but yeah the consistency is there <laughs> Every month, there's a different theme a different um connection for people um but i do have to ask you because yeah. maybe there are people that are like okay i want to try yoga i've seen you know maybe i've done it at home via youtube or tiktok yeah. but i am a little concerned about coming to a class um they might think that yoga looks like a certain way or picture perfect. They're like, I, I don't have the coordinated outfits. Like, you know, like, so it's like, how, like, how would you uh, sell your experience or how would you describe your experience for someone that would love to attend, but they might be a little shy? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So something you said that stuck out was even just like the attire. So if you think about going to a traditional yoga studio, there is a certain level of almost like a chill. Like it feels a little like, hmm, okay. Like, I don't know how I should act in here. People really don't like interact a whole lot like before or after the class, unless it's like the instructor or the person at the front desk saying hello, but like the students aren't really interacting. So it feels a little bit stiff or quiet <clears throat> and things like that. But for my classes, I always was like, I want this to feel like you're meeting up with your friends or you're meeting new friends and then y'all just decide to flow together and then mm -hmm. y'all key after and then like you go home. And part of that was just because I really wanted to build community for myself. Like I wanted to make new friends in LA and like I wanted it to feel good. Um, and then also like when people are coming in, it's like you have to think about the, the amount of courage it takes to even show up in the first place. 
especially mm-hmm. if you've never done yoga before. And it's a blessing for me to be that first yoga teacher for a lot of students. Like I've had so many students come in who've never done yoga before, but they came because Drake was on the playlist. And I'm like, cool, yeah. <laughs> you know, let's do it. Um, but I'm always trying to make sure that everyone feels comfortable, you feel safe. Um, not that you won't ever feel challenged because challenge is necessary for growth, but like you at least know that you're going to be taken care of and that you have agency over your body. And so I do that one by really connecting with everyone who comes in. Like I want to say hello to you. I want to know your name. Um, I also do these icebreaker cards at the beginning of my classes just to get people talking and they're not like surface level, like they're actually deep questions. So just really break the ice mm-hmm. and even the playing field. Um, I also just like to add in other aspects of hospitality. So like if it's really hot outside, I'll have a cold towel, Um, always have water. Sometimes I have like granola bars and fruit and things like that, just so that you feel like valued and that you feel like you're kind of at home. Like I want to feel like you're just going to someone's house, hanging out, Mm -hmm. doing yoga versus like feeling like you have to perform or like you just have to be doing the same thing as everybody else in the class. I always tell people like the poses are optional. If all you do is breathe, like that's yoga and that's great. So (laughs) don't have to worry about the other stuff. (laughs) And I love that it was kind of like a calling for you too. You're like, you know what? I want to build community and I want to connect with people. That always tends to happen. Like you end up finding your tribe so, you know, once you found your tribe, like, did you find them via Instagram, like you checking out other orgs? Like, how has community played a huge role into what you do? Yeah, so it's been a mix. Um, I definitely connected with a lot of people on Instagram, especially during COVID. Um, when I started the Healthy and Well page, I intentionally was like seeking out every Black and Brown wellness person. Like, if you're in the space, like I'm just following you, just tapping in. Cause I just wanted to at least say like, even if you're not coming to my class, if you're looking for mm-hmm. something, like I can direct you somewhere, even if it's not in LA. So I was very intentional about that. Um, and then also like, I'm such a big researcher. So I'm always looking for things. And it's like, if I'm scouring through hashtags, like I'll find the person I'm looking for. Um, when it comes to like sharing my offerings and things like that, it has been through Instagram, it has been through my mailing list. Um, I've been doing a monthly newsletter for about two years now. So I really like love pouring into that and sharing a message once a month, as well as like our upcoming events mm-hmm. and also going to other events. So I've made some really good connections, just showing up to spaces that look inviting, um, that I would enjoy myself and then just naturally connecting with people. I'm not usually the one to like go up and be like, hey, I'm Naomi and I do X, Y, and Z. <laughs> Like, Mm -hmm. it's just not my thing. Um, But to just be in the space is sometimes all that I need. And, like, I even had an experience where I showed up to a yoga class. I don't even think I really, like, connected with anyone, um, Mm -hmm. you know, or, like, had a long conversation. It's kind of, like, in and out. But one of the people she saw that I shared that I was there, like, on my Instagram story and, like, found me. She was like, you looked like you knew what you were doing and like, I want to come to your class. So it's like stuff like that. It's really (laughs) cool where you just show up, you do your thing and, you know, whoever is supposed to be drawn to you, you connect with and you keep it pushing. But yeah, it's been cool. Um, I do think that connecting in person is always really fun, though, even with some people that I've connected with online, like even somebody I'm working with now for the Hot Girl Summer Series, we Mm -hmm. connected online, saw her in person, didn't even realize that it was her at first. And I love the branding, by the way, like the way y'all promoted that event. Go on Instagram and see the promotions for that event. It was. Yes. (laughs) So that was cool. That was one of those things where like we were at the same place and then we had that moment of like, wait, I know you, I know you. And then Mm -hmm. boom, started creating. The creations are better and come out better when you do it with others or Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, can you let me know, because we're going to talk about that. So not only sure. does she teach, um, you know, her own series of classes, but there's also retreats, everyone. And there's also different experiences and more events coming your way for sure. Um, so just talk to me, like, what made you be like, you know what? I want to go on a retreat and take these people with me <laughs> and yeah. like cater to a weekend of wellness, not just a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... I've been wanting to do a retreat already, Um, but if you know anything about retreats or have even like looked into it as far as the logistics side, 
it's a lot. You know, mm -hmm. you have to really take your time with planning it out. You got to get your budget right. You got to find the right place and all the things. Um, and so I actually had gone to the first place I did a retreat, which was Temecula. I went there with one of my friends and I'm the friend of the friend group that likes to plan. So I love putting together a good itinerary. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I also spent six years uh, working in a restaurant. So I'm big on hospitality and like making sure that service is good. I love food. I love wine. So when I went to Temecula, I was like, this is great. Like we went wine tasting and stuff. But then I also wanted to pull in that wellness component. Mm -hmm. And again, it's so interesting how like starting this journey, I've seen how time and time again, life will just create these things for me. So it's like, I wasn't really trying to like force it to be in Temecula, but like I just naturally was there and I was like, why not bring people here? Um, so I really love to just create things based off of my natural inspirations and like my life journey. And that's how the retreat came together. And I found this beautiful house and I was just like, okay, this is where we're going to go. So we're going to do and it was so amazing. We did four days, three nights in Temecula. We did wine tasting, sound baths, daily yoga. Um, I had a private chef come in. They made all vegan meals throughout the entire time. Wow. And it was just super relaxing. Like I brought in um, a masseuse. So all the ladies got massages as well. And it was very, very fulfilling. Like I was so happy like when it was over because I was like, wow, like I really did this. And it was not mm -hmm. like something easy to pull off by any means. Um, but it felt right. It felt like, okay, when you're on a retreat, you get more time to like really immerse yourself in the practices and to also just like take off those layers of like worry, um, work stress, home life stress. Like you really get to just drop in and connect with yourself on such a deep level and with the other people there. So that was my favorite part was like the community of ladies there and just them being so open to share, you know, about their lives and things that they may have been struggling with and to also offer support to each other too. So it's great. It's very um, impactful and can be very life-changing too. Have you ever been kind of like wowed or feel this like uh this energy of like, wow, like these people are really taking time to invest in themselves first and foremost, but to invest in me and like the services and practice that I offer. Like, have you ever been kind of shocked by like, whoa, like these people really want to come with me. And then, you know, you kind of feel like, okay, now I have to cater to them at the same time, but I'm also catering to myself. Like, how do you juggle those feelings during a retreat? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I feel it all the time. It's this duality of like the humbleness that people would trust me to come and provide this experience for them, mm -hmm. but also um, a real security in myself knowing that I'm supposed to be doing this, you know, and I have the qualifications, I have the gifts and like everything aligned for me to be able to show up in this way. And to just be responsible to take care of people. Like, I'm so big on just making sure that people are good, that they have what they need, that they feel valued, loved, um, seen, and things like that. So it's, yeah, it's, it is that humbleness. Because I'm like, dang, like, all these people showed yeah. up. But like, um, <laughs> people really, like, invested in a, a, an experience like this. Mm -hmm. like, it's really crazy when I think about it. Um, and I just, I sit in gratitude for that. Because there are those moments where, like, Maybe I put out an offering and it doesn't strike like another one does. And so mm -hmm. in those moments, like I have to look back on the other ones and be like, wow, okay, but you did that, you know, and that was really good. Yeah. It's just not time, you know, for the other one that you wanted to do because there, mm -hmm. again, there's that up and down with entrepreneurship, with life. So yeah. I enjoy those moments to the max and reflect on them often, especially if I'm in a moment that's a little bit like, ah, I don't know how I can keep doing this and like all of that stuff too. <laughs> No, I love it. I mean, from what I see on Instagram and then what you show in person as well, like definitely plenty of success and blessings. Um, and what I really love too is like the welcoming part of it. And for everyone listening or watching, like her classes are not that easy either. Like <laughs> some like toughness uh, while you're also jamming to some good music. But yeah, yeah it's it's it literally you have to go. You have to go. Um, we're going to get to some little fun parts as well, because 
what I love about entrepreneurship or just like uh, putting your gifts out there is we also have to promote what it is that we offer. And I love your marketing. I love the creativity. Um, I love the fact that you create content as well. So talk to me about like the creating content side of like sharing who you are as a person, because I know you mentioned you were making videos like yoga videos, mm -hmm. but now you're also doing videos like vlogs, talking more in front of the camera. So it's not always just uh, you flowing and doing yoga. Mm -hmm. uh, so talk to me about the content creation side of this business and yeah. who you are. Of course. So it's so funny, like, because I, I sometimes segment my journey of like, oh, well, in 2020 or in 2022, then I started doing this. But like, I've always been someone who likes to share and create mm -hmm. things. Like, I was in middle school, like learning how to do garage band so that I could make oh, wow. a song or like I was creating stuff on like when there was photo booth on the Macs. Like I was always doing stuff like that. I actually have way, this is way back in the day, but like a YouTube video up with me. Oh, I have to go back. <laughs> yeah. If you find it, go ahead and watch it because you'll get a great laugh out of it. But I was literally just like pretending like I had my own show and was just like being <laughs> super animated and crazy. Um, so it's like, that's always been in me. Um, but I think that because I spent a lot of time just building out, you know, healthy and well, and also just being in my practice of yoga, like I didn't start to like talk about my journey a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I was always just more comfortable writing about it. Um, but I've been getting a lot of nudges, especially this year to just be more open and to document my journey um, in full transparency, like this year has been the hardest year as an entrepreneur for me. Mm -hmm. And I've experienced a lot of like losses and yet have still been able to show up well and to keep things going mm -hmm. and to still experience some success while also feeling like, okay, things are like not where they were last year mm -hmm. and things are hard. Um, but I'm documenting it because I think that with content creation, there's so many different mediums now. And like Instagram has one way of doing things. TikTok has one, YouTube has one. And I want to be able to control my story and how I'm showing up. Mm -hmm. And so that's where like YouTube is now exciting for me because like I'm documenting in a different way and I'm like giving more long form content. I'm sharing more behind the scenes. Um, I'm sharing like real life stuff of me like, okay, am I able to even stay in LA anymore? Like, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. um and things like that but again it's all guided by like my journey and just knowing that if i'm dealing with this and i'm brave enough to share it like there's someone out there who's going to receive it at just the right time and it's going to give them encouragement um because that's one thing where like when you're in the thick of it like you feel like you're alone you feel like you're the only person mm -hmm. dealing with it and so i want to be able to share like the real like yes there's these great things and i'm having these like sold out events but at the same time like I'm struggling or like, I don't know where I'm going to end up in my career and things like that too. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with content, um, I just always try to leave from a place of transparency, of vulnerability, um, and also of light. So it's like, yes, I'm sharing things that may be challenging, but I'm also going to share like the way that I'm finding my light in it mm -hmm. and just be joyful and to move through it, to flow through it, to dance and like all of that. I love that. Everyone, like, for real, you two girlies unite. <laughs> but I, I do believe it's important, not just for, for ourselves, whether we're documenting, you know, but just for the journey. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's just like a release and a yeah. nice way to be like, okay, whew, I did that. Yep. And then just like to see to the proof of like, wow, like I really went through that, but mm -hmm. I'm also hot here. So I commend you for doing that. I'm on the same boat as well. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, like this, I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. Um, regardless, I know we're thriving, you know, so definitely commend you for the consistency. Okay. It really takes a lot. So definitely, I love that. And um, I do have to talk to you a little bit about just like the mental health aspect of it. Because I know, you know, a lot of people that are in wellness, I guess from the outside looking in, I'm always like, okay, well, y'all definitely mastered mental health. <laughs> like, it seems like y'all have mastered it. You know, you're right. medicine, you're you're right. like, oh, <laughs> but have, have you ever had moments of like, just, okay, whew, 
giving up today or yeah. not giving up, but just kind of like today is not the day that meditation is really hitting it for or doing it for me. Yeah. How do you deal with mental health being that you're in the wellness space? Yeah. Honestly, like it's not like you just go and you decide, okay, I'm going to be this wellness person and then everything's fine. Mm -hmm. but it's not. Now, what does happen though is that you start to get these tools that you can pull from when things are just not good. And the tools don't always work. I'll be honest. Like some tools are like, okay, it works for this day or it works for this hour. Mm -hmm. And then the hour's up and you need another tool. And that's just yeah. what it is. <laughs> Um, but there's also just seasons where things are tough and maybe you need more tools than you've ever needed before. And so for me, like, yes, getting up each day, um, and just really taking a moment to connect with God is like what I need beyond anything else. And then the other stuff helps me to see the light, to be grateful, you know, for what I have. And to just move through life feeling like, okay, I have a sense of purpose. Um, I know what I'm doing. I feel aligned to at least show up in the way that I need to. But mm -hmm. I also practice giving myself grace to like have a bad day. Like literally yesterday, I allowed my day to just be whatever it was. I was mm -hmm. like, listen, I am uh, balancing some transitions right now. And next week is going to get really crazy for me. So if I just want to have this day, that's just kind of like, whatever. It doesn't really count for anything. Like I'll do that. Um, and then today I woke up and I said, I'm going to have a great day on purpose and have been doing all the things to allow for that. But I think that when it comes to mental health, yes, it's good to like be able to take care of yourself, but it's also very, very necessary to have people that you can talk to. And that can remind you of like who you are mm -hmm. to remind you that you can get through hard things, um, to pray for you, to help you with things. So just like, Again, be like, okay, I know you're feeling like this right now and your feelings are valid. And at the same time, you are X, Y, and Z and you've always been that and you will continue to be. This is just one part in your life and it's not going to be there forever. And like having people like that, like help me on those days when I'm like, okay, I don't have it to give to myself. And especially people who are showing up and holding space for others, you need that even more. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes, like, you're still showing up even when you're maybe not even feeling your best. And so it's, like, constantly outpouring. So you yeah. need that to come back to you in some kind of way, whether you're taking the time to rest or you're allowing for people to pour, you know, right back into you. I love that. That's literally hot girl wellness. Yes. <laughs> Well-rounded, it's everything. Like, yeah. It's like you have those moments of, like, uh, what, what do they call it now? Rotting. Just a day of, like, I'm just going to sit. <laughs> I'm not gonna a good rotting session is yeah. <laughs> oh, <I'm good. laughs> and honestly like something I've been leaning into more as well when it comes to those moments of like being in a funk yes like give yourself the time to just like rest and not do anything but then mm -hmm. also like allow yourself to put on your favorite song and dance you know mm -hmm. like and do whatever. Like, it doesn't have to look good. It doesn't have to be recorded. It doesn't have to be for anybody but you. But, like, allow yourself to take yourself out of that. I don't know. Sometimes it happens in, like, a loop of worry and anxiety. And it's just over and over and over again. And you need a burst of, you know, a fun song or music or just, like, being out in the sun, like, to just, okay, reset. Let's mm -hmm. tap back in. Let's remember, you know, that I have this energy source within me. And that I have hope, you know, and so those are the things that I literally am actively doing um, <laughs> to keep my spirit lifted, to stay positive and just keep my mindset in a good space. No, we have to do it. It's it's so important. And also the fact that you also have good people in your corner. I think that's so powerful, especially just being in a city where there's a lot going on and everyone's, you know, working on their own thing. But just having those people behind you that are like, keep going, or you yeah. know, you're doing well, like I support you, whether it's a like, comment, a share. Because sure. sure. um, sometimes a lot of support comes from people that are not even in your closest yeah. friends, you know what I mean? So wherever you're getting that good energy, definitely keep that going. And I wanna, you know, keep the energy flowing. Mm -hmm. And I wanna talk about the future, because I know you said two years ago, you know, you started your journey two to three years ago. 
two more years coming up. What do you see um, Healthy and Well doing? What are some manifestations that you want to put forward? Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you. So it's very interesting. I am currently in a career transition. I'm still keeping things going with Healthy and Well, but I'm stepping into a new role um, under a nonprofit that works with schools here in L.A., to provide wellness spaces and wellness instruction. So I'll be one of their teachers. And for so high- I'm sorry. Is it for high school or? Yeah. So it's actually K through 12. Oh. Um, so I'll be working with students of all ages. And so as I'm thinking forward, um, I really just see myself being able to partner more with different organizations that are doing similar work. I think that it's great that I've been able to build this thing relatively like on my own, but there's so many people that have a shared vision for a wellness for everyone, um, Mm -hmm. for building community. And so I really want to lean into long-term collaborations in that way. Even with the hot girl summer series, like me and Angie, we put that together for this summer and like, we're already planning for next year and how we want to do a hot girl summer free, like, you know, things like that, where I just want to say, okay, this is working. Mm-hmm. How can we make it even bigger? How can we make it even better? How can we allow for more people to experience this? Um, and then for me personally, I just want to continue to show up and share my story. Uh, mm-hmm. I really want to work with people more intimately. So instead of just like, or I shouldn't say instead of, but in addition to allowing, you know, those community events and people coming in in that space, I also want to bring in clients for coaching small groups and individual coaching um, because I'm also a health coach and I also do Reiki and some other healing modalities. So I just want to allow for that to come in so I can support people beyond like a one and a half hour class, but more so like on a regular basis or for like a three month, you know, container, things like that to where Mm -hmm. I'm really walking people through their transformation and lifestyle changes and things like that. Oh, I see this building like crazy. (laughs) <laughs> Especially because uh, the brands that you collab with are very intentional too. So I see, you know, brand partnerships and everything in the store for you. <laughs> this is so cool. And it's also nice to see that you're thinking uh, community first mm-hmm. and very like, outward. Um, and it's going to come back for sure. Yeah. Especially if, if it's like for the kids as well. Like I think wellness is so important. Like it's crazy to think that as adults, we're now just learning, especially the millennials. Yep. Gen Z, they're already like, good for them. I'm so happy that they're about that. But for a lot of us, you know, we don't even know about wellness until adulthood. Mm-hmm. Or we don't know about the terms or the things that we can do. So the fact that you are providing this um, to younger generations, I love that. Yeah. And I want you to also let us know, because I know it's super important for not only you know me to interview these amazing creators, but I would love for everyone that watches these episodes to connect uh, with each and every person that is here for the show. How can we connect with you? How what, any upcoming events or things that you want to keep us in the radar? Yeah, absolutely. So you can find me on Instagram at Naomi Lives Well, and then you can find my company Healthy and Well. It'll be in the bio of my personal page, or you can just type in healthyandwell.la. Um, in the link in both of those bios, you'll see all the offerings that we have currently. Um, there's a full website for Healthy and Well. You can do yoga classes um, from the website and from that YouTube channel. And then if you're here in LA, you'll see all the upcoming events. Um, we're rounding out the summer with the Hot Girl Summer Series and with our Rooftop Yoga Versus Summer Series too. And then as we transition into the fall, we'll be bringing back um, one of our events from last year, which is called Fall Into Ease, which mm-hmm. is a candlelit yoga experience. It's super, super nourishing. Um, so look out for that. The date will be released very soon. And then we will be doing some retreats for the spring and summer of next year. And anything related to me, you'll just see it on my personal page. Uh, I did just start a new YouTube channel where I'm sharing behind the scenes content about my life and my entrepreneurship journey. So you can find that on YouTube as well under Naomi Lives Well. I love that. And honestly, y'all, if you have been tuning into this episode or you're about to hit the replay button and watch it over again, 
this is the episode that I think we all need because like Naomi said, we're about to transition into the fall pretty soon. Mm -hmm. um, so I do believe in kind of having a moment of, you know, some rest. A lot of us have been hustling in this season from January to August. Um, and hot girl wellness really is that, like definitely hustle, but have moments of self-care and listen to your body and your wellness. And I hope that this episode just refreshes you to keep going, be vulnerable, and, you know, come out to one of her yoga classes or experiences. <laughs> because trust me, they are well worth it. And sometimes there's hidden gems in the newsletters and free classes as well. So you never know. Yeah. Um, definitely, <laughs> definitely tune in. Um, so I just want to say thank you so much for this wonderful episode. I can't wait to see more of your journey online and in person. And for everyone tuning in, don't forget, um, we are live every Monday, 10 a.m. And then we'll be having some more interviews and hopefully also some street interviews because um, just like you, I'm trying to push myself to also do interviews outside of my house. <laughs> in the street. In the wild. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of growth. So yeah, don't forget we're live every Monday and then connect with us on all socials because we're trying to be out there as well. So thank you everyone. <laughs> Bye.